right? Right. So um, here, here's the thing, all right? So your question is you want to get started in real estate. Yeah, for and sure. You're, you're thinking like, okay, wholesaling. Wholesaling is a good way to get started. But let me tell you, the, there's only three ways to get started in real estate, okay? Right. And there's only three ways to make money in real estate. Okay. This is going to be this is going to be a mindset shift for a lot of people. Wholesale is one. Okay. Number two is fix and flip or build, right? Because basically developing. Right. And I'm here. Okay. And then hey. the third one is buy and hold. Buy and hold. Okay. Now what happens is everybody looks at buy and hold. Like I'm going to buy rentals. I'm going to turn those, or I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to turn it into an Airbnb or a corporate rental or whatever. And the first thing they think of is credit. Yes. Right. That's what I was going to say, because I know like a lot of people was telling me that like, I had to go about having good credit. I can't go about getting a real estate loan right now. Or I can't Bro, get a I loan literally right every single deal I've bought in the last seven years, I have never pulled my credit. Nobody's asked for my bank records. Nobody's what? asked for my, literally, this is what I do. This is why everybody learns from me. Wow. Okay. So you got to go I'm, deeper and you got go deeper into the YouTube channel, but I'll, I want to go into this for a minute. Okay. For sure. Okay. I, I literally, like, if you look on my Instagram today, I bought a 264 unit um, apartment complex in Springfield, Illinois. I'm going to close on it in like a week. Okay. I've never been to the property. Wow. Nobody asked me for my credit. Nobody asked me for my bank balance, my job history. Nobody asked for my pedigree. Nobody asked like what my experience level was. Literally none of that. For sure. It's crazy. Okay. So let me, let me get into this stuff. Cause this is a, this is a very, very common misunderstanding about people trying to get started in real estate. Why should I start in wholesale? And I'm going to hurt some wholesale wholesalers feelings. Cause I'm on YouTube yeah. right now. Some wholesalers are going to get their feelings hurt. I should start with wholesale if I'm starting and I, A, hate my job that I currently have and I want to quit. Okay, wholesaling is a great way for you to take, get rid of a job that you hate today to then start wholesaling that you will hate in three years. Okay, every wholesaler I know in three to five years of wholesaling says, I got to get out of wholesale. Wow. Okay. Because they elevate, right? It's the same thing with like LeBron James or Kobe or any of these guys. They go and they get into the league and they yeah. go, all right, well, this is life-changing money. Well, yeah, for like a year or two and then you get used to that money and you go, what's next? True. Right? And then they start, you know, getting into like vitamin water and other things and they start expanding and, and all of those types of things. That's what happens with wholesale. Okay? So, A, if you hate your job and you want to quit your job, it's a great way to do it. B, if you like your job, but you just want a side hustle to make a little bit more money, it's a great way to, to go, okay? Right. If I'm a dentist, okay, let's say, and I'm a, dent I'm a dentist for a living or a doctor or an engineer, a traveling nurse, like any, any profession, let's just say profession, forget about de dentist, okay? I'm a professional and I'm making, let's say, 150000 plus per year. Okay, which is not a, not a lot of people, but basically everybody in my sphere of influence, right? For sure. $150,000 a year, I would say don't wholesale. Don't. Because here's the problem with wholesaling, right? You, you get into wholesale, then you start asking these types of questions like, okay, well, how do I scale this? Well, you're right. scaling an animal that at some point you're not going to want to have in your house. Oh, okay. Okay. It, it, it's like you get acquisition people, you get an office, you get all this stuff. And then you're like, man, literally a wholesale business is just chasing the next deal. Okay. So again, going back to the analogy, right? The analogy I gave you on um, Instagram this morning was for sure. a wholesaler, what they do for a living is they go, you know what, man, I got to make money today. I'm broke. Right? right. So what do they do? They go down to a farmer who has an, I know this is an analogy, so it's not literal, but you get it. They go down to a, an orchard and they knock on, they literally, this is like such a great analogy because this is what wholesalers do. They'll go knock on doors, they'll go talk to people and they'll try and get the most discounted thing possible to go and sell it to somebody else at a higher price. That's what wholesaling is. So 
let's say they go to an orange or orange farmer, right? I live on a, I live in an orange, like heavy or, orange orchard area. So this analogy makes sense. I, I look out my back window when I take a shower and I see like hundreds of acres of oranges. Okay. So I think about this all the time. So right. I'm a wholesaler. I go knock on that farmer's door. Okay. Knock, knock, knock. I knock on that farmer's door and the, Farmer's like, what do you want? And I go, I want to buy some of these oranges on your tree and I want to go sell them to somebody else at a higher price. And the farmer's like, okay, well, what are you going to pay me for them? And you have a right. negotiation, you figure out a price that works, you go over to the trees and you bag these things up. Now you have control of the oranges, right? So I got a couple options. I can go on the side of the street and sell these things one by one, or I could go maybe to a supermarket or I could figure out how to turn it into juice or whatever else. I'm basically taking something that somebody else, of somebody else's, getting a discount on it, and then going and selling it to somebody else at a higher price to pay my bills, okay? Literally 99% of wholesalers are, are like, they sell those oranges that day. Let's say they go buy 10 bags of oranges. They go sell all 10 bags of oranges. They take the money that they make from the, that transaction, and they literally just reinvest it right back into their the next bag of oranges and you okay. don't they're addicted to it because they're like oh my gosh i'm making 30 grand a month i'm making 40 grand a month they're buying nice cars they're doing all this stuff and i'm like guys you were making five grand a month five months ago now you're making 30 grand a month and you're spending all of it right it's poor financial management That's very so true 99 percent of wholesalers what they do is instead of taking one of those oranges breaking it down planting the seeds and essentially buying one, let's say I go wholesale nine houses, you should go and acquire one of one out of 10. Okay, so I go get 10 houses under contract, I should keep one wholesale nine. And I should do that over and over and over in my first year of being a wholesaler. Okay. My second year of being in wholesale, I should go get 10 houses under contract and probably keep three of them every 10. And then by year three, it should be like 50% of the houses I get under contract, I keep in my portfolio and 50% of them, I either fix and flip and I wholesale, right? Wholesale right. is really great for paying the bills today. Oh, and, okay. Okay. It's good for paying the bills today. And here's a caveat for people who have no skills, no credit and no experience. Wholesale is an absolute amazing way to get into the business is not a great way to stay in the business, okay? I look at it as like, you're the water boy on the football team. It's like, yeah, it's a great way to get your foot in the door, but don't you wanna play on the team? Don't you wanna be actually one of the guys that's like making the real money? Right. Wholesalers are the lowest totem pole in real estate. They make, the, they make good money, but they're frowned upon, they're looked down on. I am somebody who wholesales, so I'm not, I'm just giving you the real truth of this, okay? For sure. So if you're somebody that says, look, I don't have money, I don't have credit. I don't have experience. I have nothing. Wholesale is a wonderful way to get started. But if you're like, I've got a student, her name is Yatung, okay, a Asian lady. She makes really good money in her day job. And she's like, I love my day job. She joined my program thinking I'm going to teach her how to wholesale, which I do. I teach people how to wholesale. I teach people how to acquire. I teach people how to manage businesses, how to manage their marriage. I teach all my students all sorts of things. I can't even like, I don't have the time to tell you. And she comes in and she's like, Pace, I'm conflicted. Like, I, don't, I just don't feel like wholesaling is my thing. And I'm like, your tongue, it's not your thing. She's like, well, what do you mean? I, can't, I joined this to um, learn wholesale from you. And I go, no, you didn't, your tongue. You came here to learn how to be a, a wealthy, wealthy millionaire, however possible for your individual situation. That's what you came here for. Your situation is you make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in a job you love. Why would you quit that? use that as a superpower and start buying um, sub two deals and seller finance deals from the other students who are wholesaling. So that's what she's doing. Now she's got students that are wholesaling, selling her deals that she's taking those oranges, planting the, the seeds in the ground and watching those trees grow while she keeps her day job. The problem with real estate is that people need individual tailored advice to their specific situation in order for them to know how to get started. So this is why everybody's like, I don't know how to get started. I don't know which way to go. I'm stuck. I'm, it's because nobody sat down and actually talked to you about your individual situation because every single person I talk to has a different situation, a different mindset um, you know, blockage, a different 
set of experiences, a different set of resources. Maybe their dad has money and credit that they can leverage, whatever. I, if I could go back knowing what I know now, I would still wholesale, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have used my first year as wholesaling 100% of my deals. I would have learned a very valuable skill, okay? A very valuable skill, which would be raising capital from other people and buying orchards of trees together without my own cash and without my own credit. I would have learned that skill, okay? So here's what, here's what essentially, here's what I mean. Wholesalers go knock on the door of the orchard owner and say, I want to buy these oranges. They buy 10 bags of oranges. They go and sell them to the supermarket and they get a check. And that check, they spend every dollar of it, either spending it on their lifestyle and their bills and then reinvesting it. That's and then true. what they do is they go to like masterminds and travel all over these seminars and do all these things. And they're trying to learn, how do I scale yeah. my, my wholesale business? Mm -hmm. okay? That's very true. So they go scale their wholesale business. You know how they have to do that? They got to hire other people to go do the door knocking and do, go do the management and sell to the supermarkets and do all that kind of stuff so they can start having 10 people knock on 10 orchards doors, right? Here's right. the biggest problem with wholesale. Everybody you teach ends up 100% of the time ends up leaving you and saying, dude, why am I, why am I only taking a 20% cut of this I can knock on doors myself. I can sell oranges myself. I can talk to orchard owners myself. What am I doing working for this guy? They go from, I will work for you for free. I get so many DMs. People are like, I'll work for you for free. And then six months later, after them working with me and them getting 20% of what I'm making, they then just steal all my knowledge that I gave them, took five years, 10 years for me to acquire. I give it to them in six months and they believe, oh, I've got it. Pace has given me a doctorate in wholesaling. I'm just going to go and work on my own. It is guaranteed that will happen to you as you scale a wholesale business. So what ends up happening is wholesalers get to a certain point and they're incredibly limited on their ability to expand a real wholesale business. Okay. Right. So some, that might not seem attractive. Okay, but I'd say 60, 70% of the people in, in trying to get started in wholesale or real estate are like, but I can still make 20 grand, 30 grand a month just kind of by myself as a wholesaler and I don't need to have a big team or credit or experience. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Then go start with wholesaling if that's what you want to do. I love wholesaling. It's just that we spend probably our focus is like 20% or maybe 15% wholesaling. The rest of it's 85%. How can I hold these assets, right? So here's the problem, okay? So let's go back to this analogy of the orange tree. I'm a wholesaler. I've got $5,000 in bills next month. So I know I'm like, dude, I gotta go knock some doors. I gotta go grind. So I go knock doors, knock doors, knock doors, talk mm -hmm. to farmers. They sell me a bunch of oranges. I bag them up. I go to the supermarket and I get a check for $7,000 of profit. Okay. All right, cool. I got enough money to pay my bills next month, right? And a little bit more. Uh huh. This is dope. What they should be doing with that $2,000 is going, all right, how do I keep some of these oranges for myself? And how do I go and turn these oranges instead of just getting a quick paycheck? How can I go start planting seeds that will sprout next year or the year after or the year after to the point where now it starts compounding and that's buying and holding, right? And Apartment, like buying apartment complexes is like buying an already grown orchard, right? So people right. think it's really sexy. It's like, why would I knock on the door of the orchard owner? How do I just become the orchard owner? That's multifamily. That's like apartment complexes, RV storage. That's like, I'm going to be the orchard owner, right? Well, the problem is how do you skip all those steps to become that person? Right? You don't have credit. You don't have experience. You don't have credibility. People don't believe in you. That's why wholesale can be absolutely amazing is because if you're like, I am so new to this, I just need a year of building credibility, momentum, getting checks made. I'm happy with making 20 grand a month, 15 grand a month, 30 grand a month for the first year while I learn the vernacular, the terminology, build relationships, those types of things. This is why wholesale is phenomenal, okay? But at some point, wholesale cannot, should not, be your focus at all. And so some people that are already in the financial ability quadrant to skip wholesale, I tell them skip wholesale, you don't need it. And they go, well, what should I be doing? And I go buy one Airbnb at a time. 
And they go, I don't have credit. I, I don't have the ability. I, my income doesn't justify me going out and getting loans. This is where people also come and learn from me is because I teach people how to buy houses subject to seller finance. Tiante, do you know what seller finance and subject to is? No. Okay. Let me, I'm going to give you a, a real quick story, okay? I used to have this F-150. You know what an F-150 is, right? Right. Okay. I used to have this F-150. I decided I'm going to sell this truck and it hit 320,000 miles. So it kind of like, it gave me benefit and it helped me in my life. But it hit a point where I was like, this isn't super amazing. I want to sell this. So where do I go? I go to Kelly Blue Book. Kelly Blue Book says the truck is worth $5,000. And if I put my truck, Tiante, on Craigslist for $5,000, am I getting $5,000 from somebody? No. No, because everybody's going to lowball me, right? Like $3,500 right. all cash, right? Thanks. Cool. So I don't, I'm, I'm like, I'm crazy. So what I do is I'm like, you know what I'll do? I'll throw my truck on Craigslist for $10,000 and see what happens. Well, dude, I do, of course, I'm not going to get a text. I'm not going to get a phone call. I'm not going to get anything. And that's what happened. Three months goes by. This is a true story, by the way. Three months goes by and nothing happens. Nobody calls. My wife comes to me. She's like, hey, sweetheart, like, can we get this truck out of the driveway? Like every time I come home, I got to drive around it. It's kind of becoming a little bit of a nuisance. I'm like, what do you want me to do? I'm not going to list this truck on Craigslist for five grand just to get rid of it. Somebody's going to lowball me. And to me, as a, as a contractor at the time, this truck means way more to me than 5,000 bucks. And she's like, well, you're the creative finance guy. Why don't you just sell it and accept payments instead of one chunk of money? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so genius. So literally, this is what I do, okay? I go back to my, um, my Craigslist post and I change one thing. I literally say F-150, $10,000 will take payments. Do you think I sold that truck for $10,000? I did not. I sold that truck for $12,500 because I was willing to let somebody give me $1,000 down and pay me $350 a month. I, the seller of that truck, financed my buyer. That is called seller finance. Does that make okay. sense? Makes sense. Okay. So you might think, well, why would that guy overpay for that truck, Tiante? He did not overpay for the truck. He paid exactly what he needed to because what he did is he took that truck, $350 payment, and he went out and he put that truck in his construction company and he generated six to $7,000 a month from that one truck being out in his painting company around town doing jobs. So did he overpay for that property just because Kelly Blue Book says it's worth $5,000? No, no, because in creative finance, which is what I teach, the value of something is not the purchase price. The value of something is what I can do with it, okay? So what I do is I go to sellers and I, they have apartment complexes, they have houses, they have these things. And I go, hey, it looks like you want $200,000. All these wholesalers are offering you $120,000. What if I offered you $200,000? Would you let me just make payments on the thing? And they go, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Um, give me a down payment. And I go, okay, great. And when you're brand new, you go, oh crap, I don't have down payment. By the way, sellers are not going to ask for your credit. I've none of this you're going to use credit on. None of it. I've literally in the last, uh, let's see, last probably 1700 doors I've purchased, nobody checked my credit. I don't even know what my, my credit score is. Oh, okay. Okay. The seller, just like Jose, who bought my truck for me, did I check his credit? No. I just said, give me $1,000 down and make me $350 payments every single month. And I ended up with, I, I actually charged him interest. With interest, I ended up um, selling the truck somewhere over $15,000 after all the payments were collected. That's seller finance. So it benefits the seller tremendously, but it also benefits the guy like Jose who bought the truck on seller finance that came in with a little down payment, okay? And didn't have to use his credit and could just make payments. So he could take the truck and, and go make money with it, right? Right. You, you don't need credit to buy houses. You do not need credit to buy houses. Look at my YouTube, you'll see seller finance, sub two, these things that I teach, okay? So here's what sub two is. Sell, I just told you what seller finance is. Sub two, here's sub two. Um, 
if somebody has a truck, by the way, you should go look at my sub two car video, okay? I have a guy, he uh, sold his car to me, it's a Kia. I ha now have that Kia out rented out on Turo, okay? You know what Turo mm -hmm. is, right? Oh, absolutely, for sure. Cool. Um, I ran into somebody yesterday that didn't know what Turo was, so I got to ask oh. now. So um, what happens is I, um, my videographer who helps me with my YouTube channel, he says, hey, hey, so you keep talking about how you can buy all these houses with creative finance. Like, what else can you buy with creative finance? I go, you can buy anything. He's like, anything? I go, yeah. You know how I told you the story about my F-150, how I sold that on seller finance and I got three times its value? And he goes, yeah. I go, you want to watch me buy a car on, seller fi on, on creative finance? He's like, yeah. So we literally go to Craigslist. I go through 10 phone calls on Craigslist. I run into a guy that owns a 2020 Kia Optima. And I talk to the guy and I go, hey, would you let me take over payments on this? Listen to what I just said. I said, take over payments. He says, oh my gosh, that would be un unbelievable. I'm like, what's going on? Tell me the story. And he goes, well, I bought this car two years ago. I paid full price for it. I drove it off the lot. And as you know, you drive a car off the lot, brand new, you lose like 20, 30% of its value immediately, right? Right, absolutely. So he, he now has leukemia, right? He's got a painful situation going on. He goes to try and sell the car in Craigslist for what he owes on the car and he can't. So he's getting offers like three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 under what he owes the bank on the car. Cause obviously he went to the bank, he went to the car dealership, Kia, got a loan from a, a bank and became the owner of a car, right? He just makes a payment to a bank for the money he borrowed, right? Right. The problem is he owes more money on that car than what the car is currently worth. And so he's stuck in this payment. Okay. So I said, well, why don't you just let me take over payments and give me the title to the car? Give me the registration in my name. He's like, you can do that? And I go, yeah, of course you can do that. You can do that with houses. You can do it with cars. You can do it with air conditioning units. You can do it with businesses. People buy businesses this way all the time. Okay, go watch Cody Sanchez on YouTube. She talks about buying and selling other people's businesses on seller finance and subject to all the time. So the seller, he goes, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like I haven't been able to work because of the, the leukemia. I am on um, uh, disability and it pays me a very specific amount and I can't afford this car payment plus my insurance and gas and maintenance. Like I'm just gonna stay in my home and try and get a job working from home. I go, great, so you'll let me take over your payments. He goes, yeah, here's the keys to the car, we meet. I literally don't give him a dollar, not even a dollar. He gives me the keys to his car, I get the registration, I'm now the new owner of that car. But who makes the payment on the car and whose name is on the loan? The guy who sold me the car, his name is still on the loan. I'm just, the, I log in, make the payment to the bank, but I'm the one that has the certificate of ownership, right? The title, the, the registration is all in my name. The insurance is now in my name. I'm the owner of that car. That's called subject to. I can just take over payments on somebody else's house. Mm -hmm. Now, some people go, okay, well, what do I do with it now? Well, you rent the car on Turo, you knucklehead. I got a $500 payment on the car. Yesterday, right. we got one booking on that Kia for five days, 700 bucks. That one booking of five days paid for the car for the whole month. Now everything else on that is gravy. So that one car I bought subject to, didn't use my credit, didn't give a down payment, no credentials, nobody checked my bank balance, nobody asked my job history, nobody asked for anything, okay? I took that car, went and put it on Turo, rented it out, and I make, I don't know, we'll probably make $1,500 this month net in our pocket on a car I didn't even have to apply for. That's subject to, and, and, and the F-150 story is at seller finance. So I do this with houses all the time. I go to people that are like, yeah, take over my payments. I, in fact, on Monday night, I have a wonderful call happening live. I'm gonna do it live. Uh, a, 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 a real estate agent can't sell this house. It's on the market. This is happening all over the country right now. People are having a hard time selling houses because interest rates are go have gone up. So the agent and I had a conversation. She, she goes, well, what could you do? And I go, let me take over their payments. Their interest rate is 3.25%. I'm just gonna take those payments. I don't have to qualify for the loan. I make a bank pay, a payment directly to their bank and the deed, which is the certificate of ownership or title in the car world, the deed comes into my name. So I'm the new owner of this property. You will watch me over and over and over and over for the last X amount of years I've been doing my YouTube channel acquire real estate with no credit check, a lot of times no down payments, no money of my own, 
So let's say that somebody does ask for a down payment, Tiante, and you're like, right. damn, I'm broke. I don't have that. Where do you get the down payment from? You get it from a partner. You get it from an uncle, a cousin, a this, a, a, a whatever. We call them private money lenders, right? right? People that can come in and either A, partner with you, or B, you pay them a, a monthly payment towards the, like interest, right? Right. So for me, if I already have a job and I'm making good money as, as a badass, and I'm making a $200,000, $300,000 a year, why would I ever wholesale? It doesn't make sure. sense for me to wholesale. I would rather just learn how to raise money and find these deals, sub two and seller finance, and just go get me and my partners, go and buy and acquire real estate, turn them into Airbnbs, sober living, travel, uh, travel nurse homes, um, apartment complexes, RVs, what, or RV parks, whatever it is. I would go out there and say, how can I have eternal cash flow? Right. And I would essentially be going to the orchard owner and knocking on the door and go, I don't want to buy your oranges. I want to buy the whole farm. And he goes, yeah, no problem. I want to, I'll sell it to you for $5 million. I go, great. If I give you $5 million, would you let me give you payments towards it? Yeah, sure. Give me a down payment of a million bucks. That's 20%. Let's say somebody asks you for 20% down on their farm and they'll then let you make payments on the other $4 million. This happens by the way, all the time. You want to see something crazy? this will blow your freaking mind how, how crazy and how little people actually understand about this. Right. Okay. So watch this. If I go to landwatch.com, okay. Landwatch is one of 50 websites I can go to. Okay. This one's just easy and fast. So if I go to United States owner financing right here, remember owner finance and seller finance, same thing. Look how many listings are in the country right now of owner financing ranches, um, pieces of land, mobile home parks, all sorts of stuff. This is all owner finance. There's 12,293 listings right now on one website of people saying, I don't need to check your credit. I don't, I don't care about your job history. Just give me either a small down payment and make, make monthly payments to me and they become the bank. Is this making sense? Absolutely. So I look at wholesale, I'm like, wholesale should be a pathway to get to that point. The problem is if I could teach myself in the very beginning how to just go and find these opportunities, figure out how I can hold these opportunities. I already, okay, well, I have a, 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 you don't need credit, right? We both agree we don't need credit, right? Right. You could literally have a 300 credit score and do this. Go, go. Tiante, go watch the video on my YouTube channel about how I bought my house. Okay. Like I, I you'll, you'll see, um, let's go pace, Morby, Jerry Norton. You'll see, uh, me and Jerry Norton do a lot of, uh, YouTube stuff together. So let's go. This is actually my house now, but this is, this used to be Jerry's house. And now, um, I bought Jerry's house and you'll see, um, let's do this pace, Morby, Jerry Norton. And you'll see this video right here. Jerry saying, I'm selling my 11,000 square foot mansion to Pace. But this is where I, when I used to have an old, disgusting beard. <laughs> and um, I, we break it down. We, we give you the math and we show you um, how I bought his, this, a $3 million home with no credit check. There's, there's, there's my house in the background. Okay. Me and Jerry do a ton of stuff. In fact, I think Jerry... We go to Jerry's channel. I think he's launching a new video today. Let's see. He has a, he has a 11 part series with me. How to grow your business. Okay. Very cool. So he's got a video, a 11 part series coming out today on his YouTube channel, which has like almost 400,000 subscribers, 11 parts of him and I, 11 separate videos over the next 11 days showing people, all the strategies of creative finance, of how you can just own the orange orchard. Like, why would I go and why would I go take oranges and just sell them to make 7,000 bucks and then take that $2,000 extra that I, that I have left over after I pay my bills. And then what they do is they just, they go, oh, now I can hire another person to go do more wholesale for me. And you do it and do it and do it. And you get to a point where you're like, holy crap, I'm, I'm basically babysitting a bunch of people that just want to take my business from me. That's what wholesaling is. Okay. And when somebody disagrees with me on that, which you, you, I, I have a, such a strong opinion about this, 
people go, oh, that's not true. Okay, show me, show me a wholesaler right. in the country. That's, that's just true. one. Just show me one wholesaler who is purely automated and they don't have a constant turnover of a sales team that learns how to go knock the door of these orange farmers. And they just go, then they go behind the owner of the wholesale business and go, oh, I just learned everything you know. I'm just going to go behind your back. Thank you for teaching everything. That's what wholesaling feels like after your first, second year. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Okay. So um, for me, I go, well, I can fix and flip. So here's what we do. We generate leads. Okay. We cold call, we door knock, we do all the things that everybody else does. We have relationships with agents. We, we get leads that come in and then we make a determination of, do I want to wholesale this? Do I want to fix and flip this? Or do I want to buy and hold this? I do all three. Okay. But I do probably 10, 15% of my deals are wholesale. 10, 15% of my stuff is fixing and flipping. And the vast majority of what I'm currently doing today is buying and holding because I'm sick of selling the oranges. I'd rather just have an orange, orange farm that produces oranges for me for the rest of my life and my children's life. So you're like, okay, well, where do I start? Well, Tiante, first step, you got to have an LLC. Go get an LLC. Um, I always tell people go to uh, Prime Corp, uh, Prime, uh, start with prime.com is the name of the website. Go get an LLC. It's a step one. Okay. If you don't have that, don't, don't waste your time doing anything else. For sure. Yeah, I'll have to open up my second LLC then. Okay, Perfect. that's pretty cool. Go get, a, go get an LLC. Prime will show you exactly how to set it up properly so your name's not on the LLC. You have anonymity. And then the second thing you got to do is you have to go and decide how you're going to generate leads. Okay? okay? And as you generate leads, those leads come into you. You then can ask the next question, which is, should I wholesale this? Should I fix and flip this? Or should I buy and hold this? Okay? And the, you shouldn't have the, the questions of where do I start should go away. It should be, I got my LLC with Prime. I now, the next set of questions I have is not where do I start? It should be where do I get my leads from? Okay. So what, what I would do, Tiante, go get a, an LLC set up. Go to startwithprime.com and set up a thing with them. Get an LLC and then DM me and go, hey, I've got an LLC. I'm ready for the next thing. And I'll tell you the next thing to do. I'll tell you, go get your leads from here based on your budget or whatever. With creative finance, Tiante, here's what's cool. As you know, all these wholesalers that are out there generating leads and knocking doors and doing all this kind of stuff, like 70% of their leads want too much money or don't have equity. That's true. And guess who can solve that problem? The guy who knows creative finance, the guy who knows seller finance subject too. So I have a massive part of my business is literally not spending money on leads. It's just developing relationships with wholesalers who are just starting out and they don't know creative finance. So I go, give me all your leads that your orange farmers want too much money. Right. And this right. is an interesting thing too. Like, let's say I walk it. This is the last thing I'll say, and I got a flight to catch. Um, I got to go in like three minutes. So nope. let's say I go to an orange farmer and knock on the door and I'm looking over at his orchard as I'm standing on his front porch and I'm, I look at his oranges. I'm like, man, these oranges are all dried up. There's no juice. I'm not going to be able to sell these oranges. There's no juice on these oranges. Most wholesalers will go, all right, I'm not even knocking on the door and they turn around and walk away. What I do in subject two and seller finance is I look at those oranges and I go, hmm, you know what I could turn those oranges into? I could turn those oranges into potpourri. I could turn those oranges into like orange peel for like vodka sodas and stuff like that. I could do a whole bunch of amazing things with those oranges. And we, could, we can grind up those oranges and turn them into cream for like orange cinnamon rolls, stuff like that. I know how to take something that somebody else deems unworthy or there's no juice in it. And I can make it so damn valuable, even more valuable than actually selling the oranges to the supermarket. So what do I mean by that? Somebody who has no equity in a house, right? Agent can't sell it. Wholesaler can't do anything with it. They're staring at that orange saying, there's no juice, man. This is worth, not worth my time. I look at that and I go, I can take that house and turn it into a sober living facility and make $3,000 a month. You, you idiots are worried about equity. And I told an agent yesterday, yesterday, I go equity comes and equity goes, but the cash will always flow. That's one of my mottos. So I, I'm not buying houses. I'm buying cash flow. And there, again, if you're just starting out and you have no money, no experience, 
then go sell some oranges, go find some deals and wholesale them to guys like me or wholesale them to other guys like Jamil or, or whoever. Wholesale them, get some money coming in, right? Get some experience. But at some point you will learn, I need to own the orchard or else I'm going to have to keep knocking on the orange farmer's door for the rest of my life. Right. And wholesaling is a hamster wheel that people st get stuck in for five, seven years and then go, I'm burned out. I hate this. And they're like, I just don't want to manage properties. And they justify that bull crap in their mind of like, I don't want to manage properties. I don't want to do this. I don't want to. It's like, okay, well, hi why not hire a property manager? Like, what are we talking about here? Right. So anyway, was this helpful? Man, it's very helpful, man. I mean, for sure. Most definitely. Okay. Like, step one, go get an LLC. Okay. Start with prime.com. Step two, uh -huh. the next question you should ask me is Pace, I got it. I got an LLC. How do I generate leads? And I'll, I'll give you the next step.